The following is a Candlepin Stars and Strikes rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. WNDS Sports and Tri-State Megabucks present Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Oh, look at this. Look at that! He's got it! Ready for a spare! Candlepin Stars and Strikes is sponsored in part by Washington Toyota Dodge Nissan. Looks good. Looks good. That's good to go. It's a move. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. And welcome once again to Candlepin Stars and Strikes here at Park Place Lanes in Wyndham, New Hampshire. I'm Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy, and we hope you're enjoying your Thanksgiving holiday weekend, and thanks for taking time out to join us. Championship weekend, of course. Yesterday we had our doubles title decided, and now the singles title decided. Glad you could join us, too, on this holiday weekend. Thank you. Yeah. Those turkey <laughs> enzymes uh, set in. You know, I could still be sleeping. Turkey you know. ran out, you came to work, that's right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> Nothing else to do. <laughs> Championship week, uh, we're left with our top two seeds in this series. Uh, yeah, it's a good matchup. Uh, somewhat of a rookie. He showed us last week wasn't that much of a rookie and well over 400 and uh, of course the veteran Joe Ashline's here. It should be a great matchup and uh, one of these bowls is going to go into the Tournament of Champions. Alright, without waiting any longer, let's meet our two bowlers. First of all, our number two seed. You saw him for the first time here on the wins last week. Bowling a 418 to get a big win to move into the finals from Haverhill, Massachusetts, Chris Sargent. Okay, Chris comes in averaging 125, has 199 uh, individual high single, 465 for a triple, roll-off score 678. And of course, last week he had the big win in the semifinals, beating Chuck Langlois 418 to 321. And so now he moves into the title match, trying to make it two in a row, somebody, something that no one's been able to do in this series so far. And he'll face our number one seed from Nashua, New Hampshire, Joe Ashline. Yeah, listen to these numbers, 129 for, uh, for an average, a high single 203, and a state record, and probably one of the world records, of 505 for a high triple. All right, that's the setup. Two great bowlers ready to go in this championship match. The winner, of course, gets $1,000 prize money and the trip to the springtime tournament of champions. The runner-up will take home a nice consolation prize of $500. We also have our bonus ball contest coming up later in the show. So a full hour. We're glad you're with us. We'll be back with the beginning of our championship match. Chris Sargent and Joe Ashline right after these messages. Don't go away. There's the situation, our top two seeds left over in this championship match. They finished some 50 pins apart in the uh, final roll-off held at Bowling Acres in Pe uh, Peterborough a few weeks back. But uh, all of those scores are meaningless right now. It comes down to the scores of these three games here on the wins. And Chris Sargent will start game one, our number two seed. Chris, right he threw a buddy. pretty good score last week, 418. Keep in mind that uh, we'll also be keeping somewhat of an eye on the totals that our two bowlers rack up today because the winning score, of course, becomes the qualifying score for the Tournament of Champions. Mark Gregory right is already right in, in at 370. Which won't be the top seeded ball. You don't think so? No. Chris Sargent starts with a spare. Big Phil. Talked last week about how rare it is that a bowler would get 20 marks here on the wins, and Chris had 19 a week ago. Based on what Chris did last week and on what we know Joe Ashline can do, I would say both of these guys are quite capable yes, of it. Absolutely. Chris drops eight on the spare, leaves himself the one and the two. Yes. Quick start, spare eight, spare. It's like he never left. And now Joe Ashline, our number one seed. Joe's won a lot of matches. Here on Stars and Strikes. Talked a few weeks back about 
the fact that he and Gary Carrington are the defending champions in the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. They racked up their championship last spring with a big 4-0-3 triple winning over Chuck Godzik and Peter Flynn. Joe opens with a nine box. Oh, and a strike. And a quick one it was. See the replay of that strike. So Joe puts his first mark up. And now Chris Sargent again, working on a string of two spares. Right through the middle for the spread eagle. Look out. Same spot. All right, get your sticks, buddy. Get your sticks. Seven box. All right back, Chris. Right back. And a nice recovery ball there, right in the pocket for a nine drop. Just the five pin. Nice little guy to the left. Ooh, he's going too far left. Oh, Got it. <laughs> Thought he might have gone too far left on that, but... Joe Ashline working on a strike in the second now. Oh! Ooh. Hello! Just like that. Double strike. Excuse me, but I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And nothing chintzy about either one of those strikes. For the triple? A little full that time. Two, four, seven, ten. Piece of wood behind the two and the four. Could help him with a ten pin. Oh, yeah. Spare on strike. And Joe Ashline is off to a quick start. Again, through the middle. Oh, oh yes! yes! He got it. I almost gave up on that one. <laughs> Chris turned it into a spectacular spare. Off Just the kick plate. Great shot. Great shot. Right back in the pocket this time, and the. Two, five, and eight. Seven pin drop. Here you have to be almost full on the two to carry the eight. But however, you don't want to be too full where you miss the five pin. No. Oh. How about throwing the two between the five and the eight and leaving both of them? <laughs> Nine box. Eighty through six. Pretty good start but he may be trailing. <laughs> I think he will be trailing, just a matter of how many. Joe Ashline on a spare. Takes out eight. And the seven nine pins left. Piece of wood in front of the nine, you'll have to use that. No. Last time Joe was here in singles competition was just about a year ago at this time. Early November 1992, he beat Tom Morgan. And the following week, he had to face brother Mike, and he lost by two. Those Morgans, they just keep coming at you. 
It's tough enough to beat one of them, but to have to beat the whole family, that's, uh, <laughs> that's tough. Two, four, six. Left for Joe. Piece of wood in between the two and the six. Probably wants to catch a little piece of the wood and the two pin. Very makeable spare. Oh. Mm. Next time, Joe. In addition to being the defending, uh, on the defending champion team for Stars and Strikes Tournament of Champions, Joe has also been in the singles tournament of champions twice. Ooh, <laughs> that close to a spare. Leads by 12 in the match after six. Oh, you had a great look at that one from behind Chris Sargent on lane 32. And that one was right in the pocket. Just used a little more speed that time on lane 32 after going through the middle twice in a row. With extra speed, straightened the ball out, he hit the one, two. That time he dropped the ball, actually right on the foul line. Kind of skipped it out there, took a little off the ball and by doing that. He's got the four, five, seven. Get a stick, get a stick, buddy. The nine, 107 through eight. Joe threw his hands up. He knew that was going to be full, just hoping for some kind of a break. Yeah, oh, and he makes yeah. one. Oh, yeah. Same type of shot that Chris just made without the benefit of any wood. Misses the three pin the first time through, but not coming back. Spare in a seventh. Joe and his wife Robin have three children. Four-year-old Derek, two-year-old Cody, and Amanda, the newborn. By the time this show airs, we'll be about three months old. Two, four, six. Similar shot, but the wood's in a different position. Yes. Uh, covers oh. it. Great shot. 109, spare up in the eighth. Joe Ashline with the lead. Two terrific shots right there. Chris Sargent. Wow. He'll shoot at the 10 pin. No, not quite. Tougher shot for the right-hander, of course. Next to that right-hand channel. This time he covers it for the 10. Well, last week, Chris threw 144, 143, 131. Mark here in the 10th would bring him into the 130s again, but he's going to have to work for this shot. Good effort. Very good effort. Just the four and seven left. And the 10. 127. Opening game for Chris Sargent. Joe Ashline is going to have the lead. It's just a question of what it will be. He has two boxes to work on here, and he's filling a spare here in the eighth with a big drop. It'll be nine. Spare in the ninth. Three in a row. Leading by 21. Plus the fill. Oh, 
Oh, he bounced that one right in there for a strike. How about that? That ball skipped two-thirds of the way down the lane after he put it, it down. Probably if it didn't, he'd be looking at a spread eagle, but just took enough off the ball to keep it in line with the 1-3 pocket, and as you said, the result was a strike. 158 plus two balls. Now, I heard someone in the audience say that was illegal. Now, that wasn't illegal. <laughs> that ball was perfectly uh, delivered. It just sounded bad, that's all. <laughs> And it'll be a seven. A 165 opening game for Joe Ashline. Seven marks and he put him in punches. And he piles up the early lead after one game of our championship match. Back with game two and details in our bonus ball contest in a minute. Joe Ashline after a 165 opening game to start game two. Six, seven, ten for Joe. Six, seven being the two corner pins on the right. No. Yes, they are. They're the two corner. <laughs> <laughs> And a nine box. That uh, first game by Joe sent me to the record book again because I wanted to check out where Joe stood on the all-time record list. And as it turns out, Joe appears uh, several times in our record book. He has the third highest single ever here on Stars and Strikes. That was a 185 back about three years ago. Trying to work out the spread eagle here. He also, in that series, in that three game uh, show three years ago, had a game with 10 marks, 10 spares in one game. That is a record. That's only been done once. 10 spares, that is, has only been done once. Joe also threw five strikes in a game back a couple of years ago. Three, five, and nine. Oh, That's yes. a nice spare. Very nicely done with that sleeper in the back, but in this case being the nine pin. Watch it come off the left-hand side wall and back for the nine. Chris trying to work off a 38-pin deficit. Off target, two fill. And now the two on the other, oh, two plus another one. Got the 10-pin as well. Here's a leave you don't see very often. And it'll be a seven. Joe Ashline works at Cronin Electronics, does a lot of his bowling at Lita Lanes in his hometown of Nashua. Oh. It's another one of those devastating strikes. How did the six pin stay up? I don't think anything ever touched it. <laughs> it's amazing how it didn't. Right there for the spare. Should be a crime to hit the pins that hard. <laughs> These guys both throw the ball hard. Joe has put his marks together. That's the big difference right now. One of the big differences. Joe had three marks in a row, including a double strike early, and then he had four marks in a row, finishing that run with a strike in the first game. Looking for his second in a row here, but unable to convert it. It'll be a nine. 42 through four. And another uh, sliver up an, uh, of an opportunity here for Chris to make up some ground. Uh, 
Well, you know, he can throw a few strikes. He did that last week. And he gets robbed of one there. Still rocking that 10 pin. That wood's way out in front now. You gotta be very careful with this. The wood is angled toward the corner and it bounces right off the wall. The wood was angled toward the sidewall and Chris had no choice but to play it over that way and it bounced right off the wall and in front of the 10 pin. Now back on lane 31 and look at that, right around the diamond. Diamond left plus the 10 pin. Got a oh, shot. Great at. shot. Great shot is right. Time for a timeout. I have a feeling we'll get another peek at that spare. It was a good one. He used the wood on the left of the lane to help convert it. We'll take a look and we'll be back with the rest of game two in a minute. Enthusiastic bunch here for our championship match. Really? They're right into this game. We have a lot of young fans here for this championship match as well. All ages represented. One, eight, and nine. Ooh, and now the six. Six. <laughs> And Joe gets out of it with a seven. Both bowlers have cooled a little bit here in the second game. Oh yes, right back from the bad box with a strike in the sixth. This time he crossed over in the one-two pocket, but nice and tight, just Blows everything straight back. We started talking about something at the end of last week's show, Dan. I wonder if you might expand on it a little bit. I'm sure people would be interested in hearing about this from a bowler's point of view. We talked about the whole aspect of bowling on television and getting accustomed to the lights and the cameras and waiting for things and delays and so on and kind of putting yourself in an entirely different mindset than what you would normally be in in a regular competition where you know what's going to happen and things happen the same way every single time. In all the times you were on the air, did you kind of approach it a different way? Do you think about things a different way when you're about to go on television? Well, start a week before the actual thing, and you don't sleep. <laughs> <coughs> you take everything you can to try to make yourself sleep. You don't. No, it's um, it, it's a different aspect because one, you're bowling heads to oh, big strike, and every time we start to tell stories, these guys interrupt us. <laughs> Matches a strike up by Joe Ashline. Uh, it's head-to-head -head competition and. The camera and lights are just a, a distraction, um, and I always found the distraction lasted three or four boxes. Once you get your head into the game, you forget all about the the crowd and everything else. But it's 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 a little different. It's I guess Mike um, Sergeant was uh, with his advice to his son of bowling. They call them, he calls them checks, I mean boxes, each one check at a time, and that's what you have to do. And the best thing is to do when you throw a bad box is try to forget that and get on with the, with the next one. And that's, uh, that comes with experience, I guess. Spare on strike for Joe Ashline. <laughs> His number one rooter, Gary Carrington, is in the audience today watching his doubles partner and teammate. Joe Ashline. Yeah, well, Gary also knows that if Joe wins, uh, he might buy lunch, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe another added uh, incentive. Oh, just no, slipping by. Knowing Joe, I could probably pick one of the two places that he would be able to go to. <laughs> <laughs> Ninety-six through eight for Joe. Now Chris Sargent comes up working on a strike. And would doctor ordered uh, would 
a double strike would be nice. Oh, it looks pretty good. Wow. It's a double, all right, the 5-7. Be a nine, Phil. But in this particular case, the Phil less important than the fact that he wasn't able to mark again because of the terrible leave on the 5-7. So he's lost three more pins in the match. The lead now 41. Somehow he's got to get this lead down under 30, I would think, going into the last game against Joe Ashline. A little break there. Oh, don't give up on this ball yet. The one, three, and four. All kinds of help be behind the one and the three. Got to hurry. Whoa. Yes. This ball, I forget, his ball comes back a little bit from left to right, almost like an in shoot. So it looked like he was going to be left at the head pin, and finally it broke back in. So we'll spare in the eighth. Now we just got to hope that Joe doesn't throw any marks. He's final two maybe get that lead down where you can manage it with it in the final game. Joe's going to have something to say about that, though. <laughs> Five pin. Yes. Eleven marks. Not only is he hitting the singles, they're, th they're like a thud. <laughs> he's just directly on the pin he's shooting at. 106 now through nine, plus this ball. Off target. A little break there for Chris Sargent. Mm, what an effort. Everything but the four pin. trying to wait out that piece of wood in the back, but he goes right at the pin anyway, and it's a 118. And a two game total of 283. Chris Sargent now, working on a spare, and with an opportunity to pick up some ground here. I'd like to have seen that four pin get out of there. Three, four, six. That wood is not frozen on the four pin, I don't believe. Didn't matter anyway. Well, Chris will probably take something off the lead here. He's at 111 with a box to go, but I'm sure he would love to put up a mark here. That would get that lead under 30, as you talked about, Dan. Yeah. <clears throat> spare strike, strike, spare would bring it down to 25. Oh, bounce that one a little bit. Well, watch out. Oh. He's got some help in between now. Gotta concentrate on hitting the head pin to give himself the sh a real shot at making this spare. He's got the head pin. Oh, wow. Tough break there. So it's going to remain in the mid 30s. It's a nine for a 120. And it will be a two game total, 247 for Chris Sargent. So the difference, 36. Joe Ashline in the lead, one game to go to decide the championship. We'll be back with it, Doug away. It's Chris Sargent to start game three. Uh, I'm sure Chris was well aware how tough this match was going to be. And he's got a tough challenge here, trailing by 36 against one of the best around with one game to go. Oh, there's a little break to start. Sometimes that's enough to get you going. Actually, actually hit the object pin, flush, it goes up and comes back down on the seven pin. 
tenth mark for Chris Sargent. And a little break there for an eight drop. Oh my. I think that did not do what Chris expected it to do. No. If he thought he had room to play it to the left, if he missed to the left, he might carry him off the wood. But it, as you said, it didn't work out the way he thought. Bounced the ball right through the one, two. So a costly miss there. To makeable spare. Joe doing a little house cleaning on lane 31. And he timed it just beautifully. Say, Did you notice that? Nice timing, yeah. Just as the uh, pin setter was coming up. Sure, greatly appreciated by the staff here at uh, Park Place Lanes. I'm <laughs> sure they wouldn't want to change a sweep chain. <laughs> and Joe trying to make the cut off the wall, not quite. For the 10. So the lead down to 28 with that spare eight in the first by Chris. Oh, yes, with the kick. Didn't look good for a moment. Now it looks pretty good. A seven pin for the spare. Twelve marks for Joe. And Chris Sargent is right through the middle. Nine box. Oh, leave one here, buddy. And let's see on the nine pin. No. For the spare in the fourth. Big first ball for Joe Ashline, and again, it's a nine pin drop. Was looking at the 5 7, much like Chris Sargent was, but he had a wood come back and knock down the 5 and give him that shot at that spare. And he converts the 7 pin for two marks in a row, pushed the lead back up to 39. Oh, boy. Oh, yes. He's back. <laughs> Strike on spare, Joe Ashline with the lead, and he is adding to it here in game three. Six boxes to decide the championship. We'll be back. All right, Chris. Here's Chris Sargent. Yeah, yeah, Working on a spare. Ah. Pretty good looking ball. Eight is the fill. Two and five, piece of wood next to the two. Kind of looking at him, doesn't want to cap it. 
No, nope, doesn't want to cap it. Ten bucks. Brooklyn pocket hit, and look at that, the 5, 7, 10, no wood. Ball uh, straightened out on him a little bit, and he didn't get much of a mix on it. No. <clears throat> it's still, uh, it's a pretty good looking ball going in, but not much to show for it. Just a 7. Be a little demoralizing to throw a first ball like that and see that leave. <laughs> Especially when you're down by this many. And Joe Ashline now working on a string of three marks on a strike right now. So now we're getting into those frames. Now we're going to start watching the score too. And we're right. 370 only we only have one qualifier, Mark Gregory. We'll mix up on the scoreboard. All corrected now. 76 through 5 for Joe Ashline. May take the nine out. Yep. So with just four boxes to go, Joe Ashline's lead will be 51. Joe Ashline may be headed to his third Tri-State Megabucks Singles Tournament of Champions. And with a couple more marks, he'll be heading for it with a pretty good score. That's right. And notice that Chris, uh, after he slides, is the opposite, the sliding foot swings right around and sometimes hits the ball return. That's on lane 31, it really swings it around. Nine box for Chris. Well, Joe qualified for the singles tournament of champions in 1990 and again in 91. He's missed the last two years, but looks like he's headed for the 94 event, barring a miraculous late comeback here by Chris Sargent. A piece of wood may be out of play. We'll have to have Cindy Sissom go check it. It's on the five and the nine. For a spare possibility for Chris. Next weekend, of course, the first weekend of December, and we start a brand new series here on Stars and Strikes and on the doubles program as well. Don't forget, Saturday at noon for Stars and Strikes doubles now. And Candlepin Stars and Strikes, as always, here Sunday at noon on the wins. And it's an eight box. <laughs> Joe Ashline to shoot at the diamond. Three, five, six, and nine pins. That time. Oh, yes. yes. That's mark number 15 for Joe Ashline. Ten spares, five strikes. He got a double strike early. In the first few boxes to build up a quick early lead and hasn't really been in trouble since then. And he's got a chance at another one.
Yes, sir. I want to take a moment to thank one of our participating sponsors for this four-week series here on Stars and Strikes. Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan, located right on Main Street, Route 97, Salem, New Hampshire. Remember, come to Salem and save. Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Make a shot here, Chris. Chris Sargent with the big score last week, a 418 to beat Chuck Langlois, but this week, the numbers just weren't there. And meanwhile, on the other side of the score sheet, Joe Ashline putting up some very good numbers. Joe's going to be thinking about these final two boxes now. He knows he's won the match, but... It's at three, 397 right now. Yep, he's going to be thinking about that oh. three-string total. How about that? Boy, 579 a moment ago, and now the 810 with no wood. A little bit different this week for Chris Sargent, but still a tremendous effort last week to get here to the finals. A 353. Joe congratulates him for his efforts, and now Joe can uh, safely pursue the biggest score he can get because he knows that this these two boxes here may determine oh. his qualifying score, qualifying position, I should say, for the Tri-State Mega Bucks Tournament of Champions. Big nine drop on the spare in the eighth. Oh, yes. Spare in the ninth. That's three marks in a row. That's 421. Plus a ball and the final frame. Look out in the corner. The 10 pin goes. It's like 426. Four six I don't know. I can't even add. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big number. It's a big number. <laughs> For four marks in a row, yes, sir. Some around 440. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Depending on the fill. <laughs> I heard some of you in the background say, "Come on, get it up there at 440." Oh, so it must be close. That'll do it. Let's see. It'll be a six fill, 158, and a three-game total of. 441 for Joe Ashline. That's a big number for a championship match. I think Joe will be happy to have that score sit there for several months. Joe Ashline moves into the Tournament of Champions. We've got more money to give away, of course. Bonus ball contest coming up. We'll talk to the bowlers in a minute. And welcome back. The championship match in the books. Joe Ashline advances with the big 441, and uh, that may be a score that could stick around for a while. Well, it's certainly going to be a tough one uh, when you walk in and say, well, I'm in the championship round. All i got to beat is 441. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I give him a few bucks for that one. <laughs> all right, let's meet both of our bowlers. First of all, how about a big round of applause for Chris Sargent. Chris making his first appearance on television a week ago and throwing a 400 of his own today, uh, not to be, but of course uh, battling a pretty tough opponent. But we do have a check for $500 for you, and uh, Joe really had the uh, the big numbers working in this show. Oh, yeah, especially <laughs> after the first one. Wow, <laughs> that's hard to come back from. It's, it's tough to figure out, isn't it, sometimes, how last week, boy, everything you threw seemed to be going or you'd get a break, and, and today it just didn't happen for you. No, I couldn't get nothing going. It's just... After the six, he threw 165, he threw that. That's, that's hard to come back from. I guess you have to go uh, get more advice from Dad, huh? Oh, yeah, a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations, Chris. Terrific job. We hope to see you back again. Uh, now that you've been here the first time, don't be a stranger. Oh, definitely. All right. Thank Thanks you. very much, Chris. Chris Sargent. And now uh, for our bonus ball contest, it's Joe Ashline, and uh, we're looking for a $50 winner. We've got uh, bowling balls, brand-new bowling balls on the line as well. A couple of sets, a set for Joe and a set for uh, one of our viewers if we get a match. And Joe again hitting the head pin. It's an eight drop, and Dan's trying to reach for an eight. Let's see. And we have a winner. 
and it's Helen Mailman from Gardner, Massachusetts. Helen, congratulations. We'll be sending you a check for $50, and uh, you and Mr. Ashline will each get a brand new set of bowling balls from Paramount Industries in Medway, Mass. Well, we haven't seen you for a while, Joe, so you have a new little addition to the family. Yeah. <laughs> I got my little girl, so that's how I can retire. <laughs> This is this is little Amanda making this is her first television appearance, right? Yep, uh, yeah. six weeks it took her. So dad, uh, dad should have bowled a little better last roll off, but yeah. Well, those residuals will start pouring in then for the yeah. kids. <laughs> you got pretty happy with the uh, the 441. You'll let that sit there for a little while. Yeah, I'll. I uh, I bowled good two strings. I one string I took off, but. Um, you know, that was, it's a good score, so always nice to, with it. Always nice to see somebody uh, somebody new breaking into the game. Uh, Chris did a fine job last week to get here, and I have a feeling we'll be hearing more from him, too. Yeah, he's uh, 23 years old or whatever. He uh, makes his first time on and throws a 418. That's pretty impressive, and uh, he's definitely going to be somebody to contend with down the road. <laughs> so. Well, you've had your turn at bowling. Now we have to let Derek and Cody bowl. Probably Amanda's a little bit too young, but uh, thanks very much, Joe. Congratulations. We'll see you in the spring. Oh, 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 let's let's give him the check, too. Robin, this, is, this is Robin's check. Why, do you, why is her well, name you, on the checks get, all the you time? You get to hold it for a couple of seconds, anyway. Yeah, no, okay. <laughs> Congratulations, Joe. The championship for Joe Ashline, and just a little matter of $1,000 that I forgot. But, uh, well, actually, the money isn't what's important. It's the fact that Joe is back here in the spring for the Tournament of Champions, right? Yeah, that and getting his kids on, on the air. He's getting some air time, so and we, they're going to get that. So, yeah, I guess everything's worked out right for Joe. Well, we'll see how much they get because it's time to roll the credits, and that'll do it for this week on Stars and Strikes. Don't forget, next weekend, a brand-new series, Stars and Strikes doubles on Saturday at noon, and then we're back here Sunday at noon. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a good week.